When it comes to Quest 2 all-in-one charging docks, we're getting more and more options all the time, and the sea is getting a little flooded. Let's try these two out and see if either of these stand up to some of the other ones I've tried. So we got two here, very similarly priced. I got $57 with a 10% off coupon right now on Amazon, or $60 with a 15% off coupon on Amazon. We'll start over here with this one. When I first saw this one, I think I called this one the UFO. It's kind of a weird look, but I kind of like that it's unique. If either of these has a power brick in it, that's gonna be the winner right there, you know me. And oh my gosh, there's a power brick. Okay, we can, we can just stop, we're stopping. We found the winner. So this thing kind of looks like a little, little spaceship or something. It's kind of unique, but like other all-in-one charging docks, it charges with a magnetic charger to your headset, but it also includes replacement battery doors and batteries for your controllers. So when your controllers go in, they charge them up. Now, unfortunately, these don't work with a lot of grips usually. So like for me, I've got my grips I like from Abaca. We're not really gonna have that option because I can't get these on there with this on, but we're gonna see for those of you who don't have grips you like yet, let's get this thing assembled real quick. Now, of course, for those of us who have battery straps, these are a little less appealing, especially because some of them will have a way to charge your battery strap. This one doesn't. There's no USB port you can run back to the battery. Kind of a tricky design here because the way they made this, it like makes your Quest 2 sit in it kind of cool, but now I don't see this light at all on this side. Oh, and because it sits in there, any sort of 3.5, if you have something that stays plugged in, not really an option anymore with this one either. This is really for people who are rocking pretty much a stock Quest. Okay, now I can barely tell it's charging because I can kind of see the light in there. I think for this one, they went a lot more uh, for style than function. I mean, it seems to be functioning, but they definitely, it was not built for like compatibility with many other aftermarket accessories. Batteries like these, if you never installed a set for a charging dock, you just make sure the silver side's facing out because that needs to contact these silver points and give it a place to charge. I'm puzzled because this seems like there is no logical way you would put the controllers down in this that makes any sense. Like that's, I'm looking at it all over thinking, am I doing something wrong? here let's say you finished your play session you shove your headset in there if you're on at this angle I feel like you'd want to put them like this no so then I thought okay maybe this angle no so what you're gonna do you're gonna be having your quest play session it's time to come out you walk up to this thing you go boom this is the most awkward drop ever <laughs> is that is that right that is correct. Uh, little detail, at least it tells you it's charging the controller, a little red light over here. Although I don't think I, I either didn't land this one right or I don't have it installed right. And then you, you go through that awkward motion to get your controllers in there. And then if you do have a battery head strap in 3.5, you unplug those, you put this in. But if you're just rocking a stock quest like I think they imagined, then you just drop this in there. This is one of those ones that it's not, it's not landing in there like I want it to, like easily. Like I keep finding myself awkwardly shoving it around. There we go. Okay, well at least it does have an indicator light, I see. It's just hard to see from this angle especially. It's all the way underneath the front. There we go. There's the indicator light. <sighs> all right, well I'll give this one some style points so far for being probably the most unique looking dock, but functionality, the, the weirdest thing is why are the, con the controllers are backwards? There's no way to just go boom. You're like doing this weird number. But let's see what this Gamulus one is like in comparison. Now the dock makers have realized that style is kind of important. So where this one went for just a really unique look, this one has some RGB on it. And unlike this, it also comes with grips. Very, very big grips. Why is it so big? Oh, it's like a rollback design. Slightly intrigued. Lots more assembly required. The battery doors in this one are actually magnetic. Okay, no power brick. But where they lack a power brick, they made up a tiny bit by adding an in and an out. So for the battery strap users, this one could actually give you the potential to then keep your battery strap charged up too. So I like that. I like to refer to instructions later because I like to see what is it like for someone who just gets one of these and tries to shove it together without any, any instruction manual. Not obvious. And this rear piece goes face up. This is only for if you have a battery strap. Definitely feels like a bit of an afterthought here. This might've been something they, I mean, they had to build the plastic for it, but it just doesn't feel like, the rest of the stand really hooks together and this piece feels like an add-on. But this is for battery strap people, so it's got some wire management here to run back to your rear battery. Not only does this one not come with a power brick, it doesn't even come with a freaking cable. 
They assume you're gonna have your Oculus one, I know, but come on. Come on! So stock Quest 2 style, and unlike the other one, if you had a 3.5 audio jack, I think this should work. I got too much crap on my quest. It can work around the 3.5, but it definitely would be nicer if I didn't have something in there. It would just work a little easier. Oh, and now we got the RGB going. It's charging the quest right now. Although for me, so like I said, if you had a battery shop, you're really supposed to do this differently. You're supposed to run this back up through here. And uh, it's gonna be more for elite style battery shops to have the battery under. You're not gonna quite be able to reach this thing up to charge your Bobo one, unless you do some very weird, weird mounting here. Boy, this is sketchy. The whole thing with a battery strap on, I don't, it would depend a little bit on which battery strap, but it definitely, uh, it gets very rickety. It's just not solid. The whole thing is not solid. Like it slides around too easily. Let me mount up these grips and stuff and give you some finals here on, on both these real quick. Cause I feel like I'm spending a lot of unnecessary time now because they both just, they both have a lot of character. Let's put, let's be nice today. They both have a lot of character. I do really like that they're trying on this one to find a way to integrate grips into the stand, make an all in one. It just feels like they haven't quite figured out the right process yet. Little indicator lights in the front here, so you still have your RGB, but then you can see that that's charging right now. So you don't necessarily have to use the grips if you didn't want to, but let's try their grips. I thought these were gonna be wireless charging. I feel like wireless charging would have been smarter because as I'm seeing already, these need to stay aligned, which might be a bit of a pain in the butt. There's some sort of like raising kit to put on here. And I don't know if that's necessary or not, but it'll make them land a little softer because this isn't hard plastic. This is more flexible. I don't mind the grip so far. I have yet to be able to get these to charge once on here, which is surprising because it sounds like they're, the pins are contacting. One difficulty now, you've added silicone to the mix and because it's silicone on plastic, where it was plastic on plastic, it landed and it just slid right where it needed to go. But with silicone, it hits and then it kind of sticks to the plastic almost. So you have to like adjust it after the fact. I feel like this thing is gonna make this problem worse, but I'm gonna try it to see if this makes any difference here. Because the problem I feel like is gonna be now there's less room for the pins to contact. It charged fine without the, oh, I finally got it. That was a lot of work. One of them is charging. Oh my goodness. At least with this dog, when you finish playing, it kind of makes sense to come put these on here. Like, at least the hands go this way. You got the RGB options. Yep, here's the RGB button. Is it always breathing? Is there no solid one? Said so there's seven options. And right now it's giving me breathing options on all the different colors. Show you behind the scenes how the magic works here. Yeah, I'm disappointed there's not solid options. Although, if you haven't figured it out already, the difficulty the dock has given in more than one respect. <laughs> this is not a winner for me by any long stretch of the imagination. <sighs> I could take it further, but I'll be honest with you. I, I've, it's an easy answer. I wouldn't get either of these docks right now. This one is really cool looking, but even on this desk with all of its texture and everything, it's all over the place. It, it's just because they made these tiny little contact points and they rubberized them, but they wanted this to like look like that, you know, spaceship about to fly off with its legs, which makes sense, but it messes up the functionality of it. You can't have very many other accessories, especially with this one. This is really for a stock quest too right here. And even then it's, it's more trouble than it's worth in my opinion. The most awkward thing being that they made the controllers this weird way. You're just gonna have to cross hands every time you do it. It's not a huge deal, but it's just weird. There could have been other options. This one is just rickety and weird. They put all this nice like rubbery front here to keep it from moving, but then they put all this just cheap looking plastic in the back. And so whenever there's any weight on the back, like with a battery strap, it pushes it up and this thing can just go all over the place. There's just better docks out there. These have some decent reviews. This has a four star on Amazon, it says a 4.5, although who knows how many of those are real, but like people who have gotten them are okay with them. And I think if you got one as your first dock ever, you might be all, you might be like, oh, it's cool. It looks good and you're fine with it. And it all kind of works. And you just have to mess around with your grips a lot. But I saw in the comments, people were saying they couldn't get these things to fully charge, usually with the grips on. And you're not gonna wanna take these grips off every time you charge them. Like that's gonna be a pain. Yeah, they're both a no from me for now. I'll leave some links to some other docks that I've used or like in the description below for you. But let me know your thoughts out there. We're kind of coming to this weird spot with the Quest 2 where people are like, oh, the, the three is coming. Do I really want to get accessories right now anyways, or just hold out? So I'm kind of in that same boat, and especially when you got weird things that people are still trying to innovate and do something new, but we just haven't nailed it still. Like after all this time, you think we'd have just some of the coolest, best working docks out there. And every single one comes with its drawbacks. But tell me what you think. Thank you for coming out and I'll see you in another reality.